Um, one gentleman wrote in just a moment ago and wanted to know why Festool doesn't make a belt sander. Well, in fact, Festool truly does make a belt right, sander. It's just not in this market, uh, but it is in other markets in the world. Yeah, and I think it, I think it really is uh, in the works to come over here. They're bringing tools over one at a time. Uh, the biggest hang-up they have is what I understand is with UL. Um, all different kinds of rules and regulations, but one at a time they're getting all their tools over into the U.S. So I think you'll be seeing that soon. But if you use it for your scribing, we may change your mind a little bit later in the segment. So stay tuned and pay attention to mm -hmm. the sander that we're going to do in the last segment. Yeah, once again, I have to say, John did change me from a belt sander. I'd used them for well in excess of 20 years, and, and now I, I won't use one anymore. Right. This is a clean spore uh, air sander. Uh, this one does not have dust collection, uh, but we're going to show it anyway. Actually, we wanted these tools all to be uh, with dust collection, but uh, through a little bit of a mix-up, we got some that didn't. But, but they are all available with dust collection. They are available with dust collection, correct. Um, air sanders are great. <coughs> they sound cool. Everybody <coughs> loves that. You know, it's just one of those power sounds, you know. Anyway, um, there's not a lot of moving parts to these. This one happens to be manufactured uh, by Dynabraid for Klingspor, private label. Uh, when you see the yellow one, you know that's a cling spore. This one has a 3 16 random orbit. Mm -hmm. And what I like about air sanders, other than the fact that they, they really last a long time, they're very lightweight. This doesn't weigh probably more than two pounds, and it's very low profile. So when you're standing with it, there's no wanting to tip. You can roll over the edge very easily with an air sander. A whole lot better than you can a high electric sander. When you look at the profile, of a high sander versus this, this is really neat. However, you can't take these out in the field, generally. They take a large compressor to run. Uh, most of them, uh, I'm not sure what the CFM is on these. but Typically, uh, I think 14 to 15 CFM. Okay, so that's a lot. So you need a five horsepower compressor minimum to run an air tool. Uh, basically, all air tools are the same, and I, and I know manufacturers are gonna say they're not. Uh, I know that Dynabrade has a lot of plastic parts in it now. When I talk to John at Beaver Tools, um, he tells us that his has double metal bearings on the arbor, which I believe everybody else has a single, and he has metal valve bodies, which most of the other manufacturers are going to plastic. So uh, if all of that makes a difference to you, they are all priced in the same price range, basically. Uh, I think the um, Windstorm is priced a little bit less than most of the other air tools, but um, they're all great. Um, just great way to go. Um, all they need is a drop of oil and air, and that's it. About it, you should put a drop of oil in a day. Now, let's, let's show this real quick. First of all, one of the real problems I, I know that have, has always existed for every fabricator is when you get into the bowl area, sanding in here. That's not really touching flat in there, though. No, it isn't. That's the problem. It's really riding only on the outer one inch of the pad. And this is a five inch pad. Right. So even if I were to switch into a three inch pad, when I get into a lot of these radiuses, typically I'm not going to get 100% contact. So getting down into a bowl when you're in the flat bottom isn't bad, but once you start rolling up into the walls, you get into the radiuses, you start to have problems. Okay. But a couple of years ago, we got two manufacturers together. We got uh, uh, John at Beaver Tools, who has a small, and this is a random orbital sander, right. a small uh, a random orbital with an offset head, so it's very comfortable to operate. We got him together with Danny Homerick of Danny Designs, right. who is the creator of the radius pad. That's right. And so by getting the two of them together, they made a radius pad right. that allows the paper, as you can see, to roll up on the edges. Right. So you can easily accommodate anything to comfortably, what, maybe a quarter of an inch radius with a little right. bit of pressure? Yep. So that easily allows this bowl. Maybe we could, here, let's tip this a little bit. Can okay. So now, all those corners, which before were a little bit of a problem, it's nothing. This sander easily gets... No well, dust collection on this sander. No what? No dust collection. Are your ears filled with dust? Oh, that's what it was. Actually, I'm using primitive now, dust collection. I'm using my nose. This would be especially nice in a sink bowl where your bowl actually comes almost to a 90 a with a, with a tight sink. radius. Kitchen sink, I'm sorry. Mm -hmm. uh, makes a lot of difference. 
This can also be used, a lot of guys are using it for sanding into the corner of a cove backsplash. Gets right into that inside corner except for just a little bit. Yeah, and that's the real advantage of this small pad versus you can get either a five or a six inch pad in a radius pad, but this smaller three inch radius really reduces that diameter and lets it get in pretty tight. Yep. So it saves a lot of uh, index finger work. Absolutely. Uh, we have one other air sander, uh, but it's in our large footprint sander, so I think we'll go over that one when we start talking about the large footprint sanders. So if you'll do